Hello, this is Dr. Daniel Herlihy. I'm retired osteopathic family practice doctor with Chewy, the incredible service dog. He's my seizure alert dog. I'm disabled and I'm a disability advocate. Uh, I had a major TBI <clears throat> and I just want to tell you that at the beginning of this COVID thing, I was working sort of an outreach program at a homeless shelter. And uh, I noticed a lot of ambulances pulling up. Lots, two to four a day. I started asking about it. Mm. This is before we didn't really know about COVID, it really wasn't on anybody's radar, but everybody was coughing. And there's a lot of geriatrics there. Geriatrics are people who named Jerry that are over 60. So I was like saying, uh, how come all the geriatrics are coughing and falling down? And Anyway, it wasn't too long before after that that I had, and you can tell, you get that fever, that little bit of like, ah, man, this is Texas, but uh, I'm a little hot here. And, and I could say, oh, this is that low-grade fever. Under 101, that's the virus fever. Above 101, we're talking probably bacteria. So very first thing is I couldn't smell, couldn't taste. And that's very weird. I even got a little ammonia capsule. <laughs> and broke it under my nose and went like, that nah, can't smell. So not only that, but I had no desire to eat and no desire to drink. Now, in geriatric population, we normally don't have that many taste buds, and we don't respond as well as we should to dehydration signals. Yep. What would Bug Bunny say about that? In any case, if eventually I just got worse and worse. I have asthma. That I started coughing, coughing. Couldn't knock it out with all my med asthma medications. Had to take narcotics at night, which is the old cough remedy syrup that everybody abused in the 70s. <clears throat> Too much information. Uh, so I could so I could at least sleep, but eventually I was bedridden for 26 days. At which time I couldn't answer my phone. It was just too much too much work to answer my phone. Uh, I couldn't prepare my own meals. Uh, people had to pick me up and take me to the doctor. People had to go and pick up my meds for me. I just descended, you know, gastrointestinal problems. Didn't want to eat, drink, just just dead tired. As if every sin came back to bite me in the patukas. Just dead tired, just resting all the time. The only thing I remember is my friend saying, hey, this guy's dying. He, Dr. Dan looks like he's dying. This is some serious stuff. He looks like he's dying. What are we going to do? He's dying. He's dying. He's dying. He's dying. Plan my funeral, for God's sakes. What are we going to put on the, you know headstone. Um, so anyway, I just want you to take this very seriously. Um, I have a, all my fam family members are in medicine in some place, and they're all frontline providers, uh, ICU, respiratory therapist, nurse. Uh, it's extremely nasty. Um, so the, one of the big things is you're going to get very dehydrated and very weak. So be very, so I, I was taken in and basically they rehydrated me. But let me tell you about that little thing. So this is what convinced me to get to say, hey, let's call in the troops. Um, this is tenting, and you go like this, like that, like that, huh? right? And see how that fall? Yeah, I can tent a little bit, but it, it falls right down, so it means I'm hydrated. But if you pull this up and it stays up, you got a problem. So that's got. So I did that on my thigh, just accidentally for some reason. I just pulled it up, and it was four inches on each side of my thigh, and then I let it go, and it just stayed there. And I went like, let me show you exactly what I did, like. That's scary tenting. I've never seen that on a patient. That's a lot. And I said, oh, I'm dying. And in fact, it came really close to it. When you're that sick with COVID, it's a matter of willpower. You're so sick. It's like the universe says, well, this could go either way. If you want to live, we'll let you live. But you got to exert some effort here. Or you can go the other way if you want. But that'd be fine. So uh, it, I had the typical thing. They asthma medications and an antibiotic. The antibiotic, by the way, is a prophylactic. You have the virus, which is killing you, but if you get another infection on top of it, right? You have all this fluid in your young lungs, it's proteinaceous solutions, which is uh, an item menu on the virus menu. It's the special. Proteinaceous food's good. We can get the bacteria to come in here and eat that, and then they'll just propagate and, you know, make some exogenous poisons endotoxins and kill the person. Okay. 
Uh, I hope that wasn't too much information, but please just take this seriously. <laughs> Man, I have never been so sick in my life. Consequently, uh, I checked out uh, some, some of my homeless friends, and yeah, it ripped through the community. Uh, everything's pretty stable now, so things are good. But please take this very seriously. And you can rent my service dog who will protect you like a talisman from corona. It's superstitious, but it's the placebo effect. <laughs> so, it, so it works, the placebo effect, right? Yeah, 30% of medical information, medical effect on a bill, placebo effect. Okay, hey, let me just show you one thing here. See that over there? Here, we're at the White Rock Yoga Studio. Here's my lotus thing right there, which is peace and happiness. And that, my friend, is Kali, the Indian goddess of death. And now I'm naming him, or her, her, the coronavirus queen. Okay? Listen, protect yourself. Take it seriously. It's, you get it. You'll know. And you will 